Yo, 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 it's your host, Spanx, of the Nothing's Normal podcast, and today I'm introducing the world's first THC seltzer water, ladies and gentlemen. This right here, this is this serves the purpose of you get high, sip around the kids, uh, you don't got to worry about nobody being in your business, nobody sniffing you out, you got to be trying to hide it with the cologne and all that, uh, this overstinking. Um, this also serves as a good uh, breath refresher. I know me, when I smoke, I got to drink something. So now you, you kill two birds with one stone here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, me, my personal favorite, I like this mango joint. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm from the tropics. I'm a tropical brother. And listen, I'm 200 pounds plus. I could chug down some beer. One of these, I'm fried dye laid to the side, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, don't forget, uh, over here, nothing's normal. We are under the Polymath Network. So, of course, you get a discount by using promo code POLY20. Don't worry. If you're having trouble with the spelling, I got you. P-O-L-Y. The number 2020, promo code, get you a discount. Also, kids, stay in school. If you're not 21, uh-uh, go get your Gatorade. Legally highest seltzer water, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy. Yo, 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 Nothing's Normal Podcast. It's your host, Spinks. Back at you with another episode, man. Uh... Dope episode we got going on today. One of my good brothers. Uh, before I get to him, we go do a couple shout outs, man. Of course, shout out to GBA. Shout out to uh, Tails. He did a giveaway on my hat nav uh, last week. Um, two boxes went out like this, like he was giving away turkey. So, you know, shout out to GBA for that. Shout out to Scarfone, the GBA hat on. Uh, yeah, uh, with that being said, man, special guest to the left. Let's get right into it. Who I got to the left, man? What's going Yo, on? What's going on? It's an honor to be here. This is the Barbara Rennie. Barbara Rennie. Um, mostly I might call no me as Bubs. Um, <laughs> yeah. but you know, we're going to buy the Barbara Rennie now. For it's sure. a brand. Let me shake your hand. Bro. Yo, welcome to um, here, bro. I always tell y'all, like, me, it's, it's, it's a little bit different with me. Like, I had a lot of influences growing up. Besides the ones that you may think or the ones you may see, the ones that's projected, like I, I studied a lot of this guy, a lot of his game tapes, man. You know, your water sign, like me. But uh, <laughs> with that being said, Rennie or, or Bubs, I'm gonna call you Bubs. Uh, where you from, yeah. Bubs, man? Um, listen, I'm from Maple. Yeah. I'm from um, Greenberg <laughs> Housing. They yeah. don't know the town. Shout yeah. out 914, Greenberg, Manhattan Ave, Oak Beach, Maple. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm from Greenberg, born and bred. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Now, um, one thing about Greenberg, uh, how was it for you growing up? I mean, a lot of different personalities. Everybody, you got two people on the same block, but, you know, they had two totally different experiences in that area. So what was it like for you in Greenberg? Um, it, it, was, a, it was a unique experience for me. Um, mm-hmm. Mind you, I'm the youngest of, like, of my siblings, so yeah. it was, I'm like the black sheep, as you would like to say, <laughs> like, we opposite you night and day. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. So I was a little more outside. You know what I mean, respectfully. So, but luckily, like you know, my crew, you know, yeah. RBG, we um, RBG. we was unique. We everybody had their own personality. We was all leaders, so yeah. it was like sure. everybody moved their own way, and um, we, we took what we had and we made it work. It's crazy <laughs> that we having this conversation. I br- I bumped into you. Okay, I bumped it with my mango man. You know, I don't really you know you bugging. You know, my mango, man. You know, I don't play about my mango. If you in, in, interrupted me with a line. Mango, you might have got the pass. Now, after I'm at the, you know what I'm saying? But. <laughs> THC margaritas. Yeah, 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 I like get, that. It Something get crazy. Different. It Legally get crazy. Highest, shout out. Shout out. To, for sure. Uh, back to what I was saying. I just bumped into your brother today. Shout out to Buzz. Shout out to Darnell, man. I just bumped into him today. And I'm not going to. The whole conversation, but that was, he pretty much I- I explained it that same way. Like you know, my, my little brother is just was just different than us. So um, okay, Greenberg, New York, youngest of three. Uh, what was your uh, parent like situation like? You know, coming um, up. I grew up single mom. This is a cliche story, but, but yeah. I didn't. I mean, my dad he was around for a little while, then he went back south. My, my pops, he's he yeah. not from New York, so right. that's. It's yeah. a secret if people don't know. That's why I'm a little different. I got that southern blood in me, so I, I go yeah. to the south a lot. Yeah. Shout out ATL, New Orleans, um, LA, you know. Shout out everything out there. But yeah, he, um, my pops was around. My mm. mom's, she <coughs> was a teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, t- typical things, just work hard, mm. um, do what she could do. But the thing is, my mom's like, she showed us how to make it, make it work with um, nothing. 
Yeah. So you take a little bit and make it look like a lot. Don't walk around with your pains on your shoulder. Mm-hmm. Um, a bunch of little stuff like that. So I was always more the person like I, I took advantage of being the youngest because I felt like I got to see my older brothers' um, experiences, they do's and they don'ts. Yeah. So like I learned from a lot of their mistakes. Mm-hmm. So I avoided them. I just so I always hung around older people. You, you see me outside. I was always around always. older crowd. A lot of people yeah. thought I was older than what I was. Um, I got into cutting hair. 14 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I started cutting about 13. Mm-hmm. But shout out to twins. They they put me in, they brought me in under their wing at like 14 years old. So yeah. um those and like I said, they was not once again two cats from the uh from the hood, from the projects that I just used my resources and try to make it work. When you say shout out to the twins, uh who who might those twins be? Who are these infamous um, twins you talking about? The legendary Jane Jamon. Yeah. Um Michelle. Legendary. I, I could talk good stories all day long. Um, so I was fortunate to be underneath them because I was exposed and I seen a lot of good things, a lot of um, mm-hmm. n- not usual stuff from the hood. So yeah. that was like, it kept my eyes open to a lot of things right there. Definitely. And uh, RBG, you know, I come from, you know, GBA. That RBG played a huge part in our influence. And one thing I learned from you was um, you... Dolo, like it's 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 a different it's a different. If you know how to move by yourself, I feel like that's a skill. Like I always, why you always kind of branched off. Like everybody will be doing this or your group, and you was always over here. So I want you to talk about you know who instead was that had some something you always adapted to. Was that something how you always was, or was that something that you learned, or it's just you you never really. The bus move and you vanish and the crowd is still right there, man. It's it's very mysterious. Um, I mean, I I, I never really looked at it. I guess that's just me. Like mm-hmm. I'm one of the people when when I want to do something, I'm I'm gonna do it. Yeah. I put my mind to it, can't nobody stop me except right. for myself. Um of course you want people to come with you, but you can't wait yeah. around all day and yeah. do so much explaining. So and I knew what was outside. Uh, that, uh, that, that that little block, like I knew. So a lot of people say he's trapped in the hood. I, yeah. always, I I I got exposed to what was outside, so it, it was attractive to me. Yeah. So I, you know what I mean. So that yeah. always kept me going. So like, and then I was always one of the people that felt like you, you leave and come back. Mm. You okay. leave and come, bring you go. You mean leave the nest? Go get some food. Go get some knowledge. Yeah. Some resources. Some connections. Yeah. And you bring it back to the hood, like cause you already know what cook got to offer. And and that just brings me into another one of your moves. Like you, with you, I learned you don't always have to announce. Cause like I said, 14 years old, you said you start cutting hair. At that mm-hmm. point, you know, you running a business, you money managing. Most of us, 14, we trying to get our working papers. We trying to get to the center. We trying to, you know, clean up, be a janitor or something of that. You already was working towards being an entrepreneur at 14, influenced by the twins. How did you, what made you, was Barbershop your favorite movie or something? Like what made you um, just say, you know what, this is what I'm gonna do? That's a good question. Cause nah, if you asked me I, today, I like 20 years ago, would I be cutting hair in my thirties? Hell no. Really? Like it was, you no know, barbers in my family, it was none of that. It was more of the, I guess the atmosphere of the barbershop, like it's mm-hmm. the brotherhood, that 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 bond in there you see. And, and you meet, once again, you meet so many different people yes. in there. Like. I could be in the shop and I could see a teacher come in there and then I could see a dude from the street, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean, a legend yeah. come in there. Then I might see an NBA player come in there. So it was like that, that kept me going. Um, <coughs> pretty much, yeah, that, so I, I don't know. I never really wanted to cut hair though that long. Like it just happened. I was mm-hmm. always in entrepreneurship though. Shout out to the center. Mm-hmm. Cause I did a matter of fact, I did a program called um, Investing kids. Wow. I did that when I was about 13, right when I was kind of playing with the Clippers. Right. It was a dude named Mr. Dansby, Ernest Dansby. He mm-hmm. was a um like a like a mentor, like volunteer from the neighborhood. And a lot of people didn't know. Like he, he ended up telling us, but he was an entrepreneur. He owned his own shit. Was it? it was like a cocktail sauce kind of like um, but for fast forward. It was in Turquoise. I don't remember Turquoise, the store that used to be like where <sighs> Christmas tree shop is at. On I Central. probably. But it was like a grocery store, a little private joint. But it was it would be probably equivalent to like uh, 
Trader Joe's. Okay. It was yeah. like a Trader Joe's type right. of show. I'm yeah. store. But um, he had his product in there and he was volunteering with it. So he used to put me to the side of me like, yo, Brandon, he gave me some of his products. So he used to teach me a lot about entrepreneurship and tell me the backside of it. So that kind of got me an entrepreneurship. And mind you, I won the competition for that course. We okay. had to do like a business plan. And wow. so I already knew yeah. I wanted to be a business scientist. Like I always was into business and money. Mm -hmm. So that was like, I just had to figure out how to go get it. I didn't know cutting hair would be it. When you say, okay, so really the goal was entrepreneurship. You knew you wanted to work for yourself. Um, how, as far as school, what kind of student were you? Or did school, like school, like listen, there's a, there's a lot of geniuses who I know who didn't graduate. Um, sidebar, you talk about a guy like Floyd Mayweather um, who has, you know, I think he dropped out of school. I don't even think he made it to the seventh grade, but he worked on his craft that eventually he mastered. So I feel like he kind of beat the game rather than wasting his time studying something he's not interested in. He got exceptionally great at something that he was interested in. And, whoosh, you know, we know where Floyd went. So what was your take? What kind of student were you? And did you realize school wasn't for you? Or just like, ah. Um, nah. I, I like school for the social aspect of it, but I right. wasn't, like, the biggest into the, the, mm -hmm. the whole system of it. Um. I took school serious, but at the same time, I, I made it fun. Mm -hmm. um, I knew like college wasn't going to be a big thing to me, like for a few reasons. One major reason, a lot of finances. It was like you know, I, I just didn't want to get caught up in that whole student loan thing. Mm -hmm. That, um, and I knew being an entrepreneur, like learning from watching shows and just reading about entrepreneurs as a kid. You know, most of your biggest entrepreneurs don't have college degrees. Yeah. Um, they learned the, the skill or they learned the industry that they wanted to, to get into and they Absolutely. figured out how to get to the top, And but they're not college yeah. right. students. So um, I wasn't really stressed on college. I, I, I did go to Westchester Community College for, for two years. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just like yeah. the same for me. Um, I mm -hmm. opened up my first barber shop while I was in school and that's kind of what made me drop out of school was like, I didn't go to class on Fridays. Wow. Yeah. Like I never, so my professor, she, um, didn't believe me, so she came to the shop one day to see what I was. Why I didn't come to class? And she was like, "Listen, I can't give you an A plus because you deserve it, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you an A minus because you don't show up on Fridays. But I respect what you're doing, but you don't. So yeah, and that's when I was like, I'm out of here. And the, and the crazy thing about that is, in hindsight, back then, like doing something like that, like dropping out of college and being a barber, would have been like it was almost like a heinous crime back then. Like people looked down on you. Yeah. Fast forward, you know, it's a billion entrepreneurs. Everybody's trying to, you know, go in business for themselves. So that's 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 dope. So let's get further into your barber career. Um, where did you uh, give your first haircut at? What was your first shop? And what was your role in the shop? Did you clean the shop? Did you, or you got straight to the Clippers? My How'd first that go? haircut. I'm like, <laughs> that's a good question. My first haircut. Um, yo, my first haircut, real talk. Rest in peace, Big Don. I think it was Big Damn, Don. Rest in peace. Um, I think that might have been my first haircut. I think I did it after school one day. We just, me and my man Jay Rat, we got our hands on some clippers. Or Jay Rat. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, a lot of people know he could cut. Um, uh, I never knew that. Yeah, he he could do it. We we cut. We started together. That's crazy. Cut. Tough. Um, we used to compete. He was VC and I was a twin, so Ooh. it was like a little comp. I mean, that was our little yeah, in-house yeah. competition it's thing. Those you know, that was our too. That was motivating. Shout out to VC to go. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. He, um, man, I just woke up, so I'm a little tired. Yeah, nah, lights good. and shit. I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, my yeah, eyes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he, um, we, Big Don was, I think, was my first person. Mm -hmm. Um, damn. I, in the barbershop, I started out getting like, I guess, I don't, I wasn't really like a sweeper, but I was getting like, I would go to the diner and get food. For mm -hmm. the twins, I would run just a little errands, go to the beauty supply store, just to hang, just to give myself a reason to, to hang out at the shop. Like, I would um get there like one o'clock in the afternoon and just be like, let people go in front of me type shit. Like, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, yo go ahead, I, yo, I, you in a rush? Go ahead, I ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just to have a reason to be there, like, right. just to have a reason to be there. So I was yeah, kind of yeah. playing that game, um, and that's how I really got in there. And then, like I said, once they found out that I was cutting at home on the streets mm -hmm. in, in the house and wherever I can. Matter of fact, I, I, that's a story within itself too. Um, it's more than my first haircut. I started cutting in school. Wow! In Woodlands. Woodlands. Shout out Woodlands. Shout out to Woodlands. Um, shout out Mr. Washington. Shout out Mr. Washington. <laughs> or he caught me the first time. I, um, he was the first time I got caught cutting hair, and he let me rock. So 
We've been worked out a little deal, so shout out Mr. Washington. Shout out to Mr. Washington. Um, <laughs> you know, I ain't gonna tell y'all that, but yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. I yeah. think he's still actively. Yeah, so we gonna leave that alone. But shout out Mr. Washington, man. He believe in entrepreneurs. <laughs> don't let nobody tell you different. <laughs> yeah, don't let him lie to you, man. Mr. Washington is for the people, man. Word, but um, shout out Mr. Foy too. Oh, um, shout out Foy for sure. Shout out Foy. Oh yeah, because those he's somebody else that also knew what like I was into the barbering and um mm -hmm. for like wise. Yeah, I'll, I'll share that part for my wise. Um, so this was a senior thing. Shout out to wise. Yeah, I, my studio was my internship, so I was able to work in the barbershop mm -hmm. as in high school, my, my senior year, because of um, I had a half a day, yeah. so I would go to the shop twelve o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, and then um, I would go to the shop twelve o'clock in the afternoon, and then uh, work, and then go to my internship at nighttime. Yeah. And I was um interning in the music studio, learning the engineering thing and all of that. Rest in peace, DMX and the whole Rest Bloodline yeah. crew. Like that's I was interning under them. They was putting together that album. Mm -hmm. So I was in the studio watching that get done. You you just you just dropped a couple bombs on us, like interning. So like like I said, fresh, young, you was already ripping and running. You was already you already was hustling, shaking, trying to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. I, I knew like quietly. Yeah. On a I, humble. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy because when, 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 it's, it's so much that, you know, it's so much that you, ex I've, I've learned watching you, it's like the average person might see you and have no clue, like, you was involved in a lot of different things that nobody has no clue of. It's scary. you like ghosts, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Look at them. It's, it's, it's crazy, but I, I, this is why I wanted to do this interview because it's so many business-wise, period, that, you know, it's a couple things I want to touch on with you. Yeah. As far as business and ventures and things, I, like that. I've been around a lot of entrepreneurship. Yeah. I always knew that's what I wanted to do, so I tried to surround mm -hmm. myself. Any opportunity, create opportunities to be around entrepreneurs, any means necessary. Like Cur currently, um, where you where you operating at? Do you have a shop? Or are I'm, you, I'm uh, currently um, running like a private suite. Mm -hmm. um, right here, Mermaid Avenue on the White Plains, mm -hmm. downtown White Plains, right in the heart, um, Oak Styles, and we. Um, it's me right now. I got my boy with me, and we um just handle my clients privately. And tra I'm tra kind of doing a little more traveling right now, so yeah. I've been traveling. You'll get into it. Yeah, so that's you know what I mean. I've been just trying to step out from behind the chair a little bit more, I'm working on a few things. Um, just really trying to brand mix the entrepreneurship with the barbering and yeah. make my stamp. Like, like I've been lately. I've been telling people like I don't want to be. Known as a good barber, I'm trying to be like a great barber, yeah. like one of the greatest to do it. For sure. So that's what I'm just striving to do. Oak Styles, break that name down. Uh, how'd you come up with that name, Oak Styles? Um, it's actually a, a, an acronym. Um, wow. For one of a kind. That's what Oak. It's Oak with two O's. O O A K. Mm -hmm. So it's one of a kind styles. Um, like I said, I, I, I'm one of a kind. I like to look at myself as one of a kind. We all unique people. Hundred percent. So you mean you're one of a kind. So it, you, you try to be anybody else, you, you'll never succeed. Yeah. So um, I try to push that. So one of a kind styles, everybody come in, they walk out looking different, yeah. like they self, mm -hmm. feeling confident like they self and like their best version of they self. So that's that's really what that comes, that's behind it. You just taught me something because the whole time, you know, we I'm thinking, you know, my, the first thing I'm thinking about is Oak Street. I'm like, yeah, a lot of people. You know, definitely from Maple. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm it's funny. Shout was, out to Oak, but I'm from Maple. Yeah. I always tell them, like, people from them, I'm like, nah, nah, I'm, yeah. I'm not from Oak, but if I was from Oak, that definitely would be it, but <laughs> from Maple. But, you know, I, I, I don't mind that, though. So we're from the same town, same hood. Talk about the process from jumping from barber to now owning a space and then you then become the boss. Uh, it's not for everybody. Uh, just because you know how to play don't mean you could coach. That's a fact. Just because you're good at something don't mean, you know, you could teach it. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's so many, you know. So talk about that process for you. Um, it's been a journey. I've learned a lot. Yeah. Um, starting so young, like we said. Yeah. So yeah. If, it's like a gift and a curse being a young entrepreneur because you, you, you feel like you want everything to go perfect. You got this perfect vision and projection mm -hmm. of how things should go. But... The world don't work like that. And nah. I, like in the beginning, I started out, I had most of the time it would be barbers older than me that worked for me. Yeah. So that was a whole nother experience. Like, yeah, um, definitely. Just having a younger boss. So I actually, but I was one of the people that was taught as a leader to play a part. You could be the leader, like the captain of the team ain't necessarily the best person on the team. Sometimes that that's one of the captains, but mm -hmm. every captain on the team ain't the best. 
But they know how they probably know how to play every role. They know how to communicate with everybody the best. Right. They got something they do the best. Mm-hmm. So I try to focus on just learning people and trying to help people be push the best out of them. And as long as I do that, I can build a team around me all the time, no matter yeah. what I'm doing. Right. Did you find more did more stress actually being ahead of the space or versus being somebody who rented the space? What was it's, the bigger headache? It's wow. Um actually written the space because me having a vision I had, I always ran into owners, barbershop owners that didn't have the vision. I seen bigger than them. Yeah. I had a bigger vision than them. So it was like, yo, why am I trying to, I had to ask myself a lot of times, why would I, why am I convincing my boss to see the bigger picture? Like who's really the boss here? Right. Yeah. Like that's not a boss. Absolutely. Well, at least, at least, you know what I mean? So. At least if and if you don't have to know everything, but you if, as a voice, but you if you don't have the vision, mm-hmm. where are we going? Yeah. So that's that was a hard thing. That's really what pushed me into getting my own shop so young, because it was me getting back and forth with the boss. Um at that, that the shop I was at at the current time, and we was just yeah. wasn't seeing eye to eye. Like mm-hmm. and um yeah, and yeah, that was yeah. Just, that was yeah. enough reason for me. <laughs> He's hindering my bread. <laughs> me knowing you out of all of the shops that you worked in, because I mean, listen, you worked in big boys at a time where somebody like me or guys a little older than me wouldn't, it, it would have been hard for them to even get a haircut at big boys. Like, I just remember hearing stories about that, that infamous barber shop. You worked at Irwin's, you worked with, you worked with some of our favorite barbers. Outside of your own, what was your, the the barber shop you you had the best experience and like you know what that was a vibe um well just just to correct real quick I didn't work in big boys okay. um I was too young yeah I probably could have got in there though you was there um but I was there that's yeah. why I was running the errands I yeah. was I was there so between yeah. so to answer that question it would be between the experience before I even started cutting in big boys or mm-hmm. I don't talk about it a lot but when I was in Atlanta yeah I worked at a barber shop called um seventy one. Um, shout out Carlos. That's the owner of the shop. Yeah, the Los. Um, he showed me a different side of the business. Mm. So I learned. I came back as an entrepreneur because right. of him. Yes. Um, he ran that shop like corporate America. So like I, um, <laughs> yo, I learned mad. I learned mad stuff from him. Um, he definitely like. You told me about that shop too. Yeah. I remember when you went down there. Yo, it was so real. He was, the, yo, that was the first time, bro. I had to sign like a non compete to work there. I didn't even know what the hell a non compete was. At I don't the even time, know what that yo. is now. Like, please tell yo, me. Yo, like, people. pretty much a non compete is you work for a company. Most corporations do it from what I've learned. You work for a company and you know, you're going to build clientele, especially if you're like a salesperson or somewhere, you're getting your own personal clients, getting personal relationships with clients. You got to sign something saying, yo, if I leave this company, I won't open up my own business. Within a certain distance, for a certain time, it could be all kind of stipulations inside <laughs> of it. Yeah, put a straight jacket he, on. Like, like on some real yeah. talk. Like, yeah. like fa- I think, death row. I actually think um, <laughs> Shannon Sharp is going through that right now yeah. with the whole skip, like that, okay. that whole situation. Yeah, yeah, That's okay. why it took him yeah. a little while before he could start doing right. what he's doing now. Because I think it was like a no compete clause in it. Um, so that's it. so. Let me see. The dude had me sign that, but on a good side, on a good note, he was the first. Like, bro, we was. Running commercials, he was running commercials on um, TNT and wow. ESPN. So if like the if the Atlanta Braves, the Hawks, or the Falcons played, our commercials ran. When you was on the Marta train, which is like they um, MTA, yeah, you they had the little TV screens. Play, you seen our commercials? So like the, the traffic and the marketing, he showed me like the business popular. side of it. Yeah, lit lit. He was super lit like that. Like as I said, shout out seventy one like. That that opened up my eyes to be like, yo, you can really do this. You can take, you can make this a career. This ain't a hustle because a lot of barbers take it as a hustle, yeah. and that's when I run like, yo, this is a career. You could, this, you can make a living out of this. <clears throat> I want to get your take on, because a barber shop. I don't want to use the word temple, but the barber shop is an experience for young men, like globally, no matter what race, what culture. The barber shop is is the place. As a kid, kid, you may not look forward to going in when you a baby. You watch people elevate from screaming to now you good to y'all are like therapists. Y'all are very essential in our culture. Y'all change the landscape. I know Thursday when I go get my cut, I, I know, listen, it's on Friday. I'm magazine ready. So what does the barbershop mean to you? What is um, the barbershop? Community, brotherhood, 
culture. Uh, that's maybe three words to, to, to describe it. I, I say, um, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's definitely for, for men. It's it's like our, our sanction. Like that's our, you know what I mean. That's our safe house. Yeah. You, you can go in the barbershop, say what you want, vent, talk about. You know what I mean. Get shit off your chest. Get advice. Not always the best advice, but you yeah. can get some Absolutely. advice. Yeah, for sure. um, Definitely see meet connections. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where you you meet some connections. Everything. Yeah. So that's that's what I get from it. Um, that's what I feel the barbershop offers. Also for the community, if you somebody that wants some input about what the community think, whether you're a politician or you could be a local business owner just surveying yeah. the Gotta look at the, the demographics. Shop. The barbershop is the going to barbershop running, asking questions. You might not, like I said, you might not like the re, all the answers because you're gonna get the real answers. Yeah. But you, that's the community. That's those are the people talking. Um, so that's what I feel the barbershop offers with while we will never get replaced and like yeah. is the barbershops will always exist. Like it's because of the atmosphere and what it brings in. What we offer to f for people mm -hmm. that experience. Yeah, it's a feeling. It's hard, like I said, it's something that sounds so minor, but it's so major in our in our culture. The barbershop. It's like, man. Um, with that being said, run us through your A list catalog, man. I'm, you know, we all got Instagram now. We was just in Invest Fest. Uh, like I said, experience. social media. You in Canada? You moving around? <laughs> You take that one picture, then you go ghost for another mm. 90 days. You drop the one picture. He might be by the Eiffel Tower this day. Then he might be, you know, next to Drake the next day. Listen, um, what's your A1, your, your A-list celebrity cut list? Like, what's some of the names you got on that resume? Um, I mean, shout out to bros. Yeah. <laughs> Rashad. Got to. <laughs> Troy. E-Y-L. Uh. Um, they opened a lot of doors, so that's yeah. like you know what I mean. For sure, we gonna touch on one that. of my favorite clients. Definitely, um, as they should. But they've introduced me. I've had opportunity to cut Dame Dash, who's an idol of mine. Mm -hmm. That was a different experience. Um, Hustler. I've been in a room with the. Uh, I've been in a room with the richest African American in um, America. So that's that's a statement within itself to be yeah. in a room. And mind you, I was there for cutting hair. For sure. So. Um, yeah. those two made that they made a day. I met Diddy. Um, mm -hmm. shout out Diddy. Shout out um, Diddy. I met Terrence J. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> it's it's Matt G. Mass, yeah, I, I've, messed, more, I've met yeah, a lot of him. I've, I've met a lot of people just through cutting hair. I've met a lot of celebrities, um, mm -hmm. influencers. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, even now, like, I like to tell people I don't. They like you, you like a celebrity barber, and I'm like, nah, I don't really call myself a celebrity barber. I think I got supreme clientele. Um, shout out to Ghost, like, yeah. <laughs> but you know, what yeah. I mean, like, that, but that's what I call it because I'm like, yo, people from more calibers. I got business people that I've cut CEOs that's like one of five in the country, like, so they're top CEOs and they're African American. So I've met, I mean, some of them, like, shout out my man Crowley, like, if mm -hmm. you know who that is, you know who that is. Um, all kind of people. So yeah. like it's a, it's a, a, everybody to me is an A lister. If I had if I had to categorize them, that's sure. why I say everybody's a supreme clientele. Like shit, I cut your hair. You know what I mean? When this oh. blow up, I'm gonna be like yo, that was yeah. one of my clients. So you know what I mean? You are gonna be one of them, you, your supreme clientele. You gave me some, one of like I said, you, Shibodi. Like y'all gave me some of my first haircuts. Like as far as me servicing in the town for sure. Uh, what's something you know when you get in the rooms? What's a word of advice? Whether it's from Shadi, I mean. You could cut his hair right here in White Plains. You cut his hair on the road, Troy. Uh, just even by being in a room, what's something that cap that got your attention that you said, you know what, that that I like that. A word of um, advice, or maybe even it's, just it's more. It's my yo. It's not even a word. Sometimes you don't even mm. have to speak to learn a lesson, bro. Sure. It's the, the exposure I've seen. Yeah. To watch them grow. Yeah. To see that, um, amazing. It, it's a, Amazing is the understatement. Like, if I didn't see it, I would probably wouldn't believe it. Yeah, it's that simple. Like, it's yeah. that real, bro. If yeah. I didn't see it, like, I've watched them grow, and um, sometimes I stand to the side and just be like, God, yo, like, damn, like, yo, these are the pros. Like, I know them. I watched this happen. Like, this is possible. That's what it tells me. This is possible. Like, right. you could do it. Yeah, it motivates me to a whole nother level. So, um, that's 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 one of the most valuable things I get from them. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not so much of the words, I, cause 
Yeah. When you're around people like that know so much more than you and they doing so many more things, what can you really say? Like, you know, right. I don't, I'd rather listen to you talk. You t- I listen, whatever you want to say, I'm listening, man. Whatever you want to show me, I'm watching, taking notes. Like, I ain't, I don't want to waste no time asking no dumbass questions. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. Like, I, 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 yeah, I can see myself doing the same thing. It's just, it's a different feeling. I'm, I can only imagine you sitting across from, like you said, the richest African American man, black man in in the in the world, like that's that ain't <laughs> like, you know what I mean? like, I mean, that ain't, ain't like <laughs> like that ain't no nah, horseplay right there. I'm watching every little detail. I'm watching, man. I'm watching, I'm watching how they shoot. Like literally, I want to see how they walk and <laughs> shit. Like when I become a billionaire, I'm manifesting it. Like yeah. I, I've learned how billionaires walk in a room and how they clear the room out and clear out the hallways. I don't, I don't been listen. I don't, I don't been. Once again, cutting here, and I say this humbly, mm-hmm. I was fortunate enough and blessed enough to be around three billionaires, black billionaires, Tyler Perry, Diddy, and Robert Smith. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've learned something that they all do in common mm-hmm. and shit that they don't, how they all different. Yeah. And um, I've learned the difference between a million and a billionaire, how they move differently. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like I've seen it. Yeah. So me seeing it is like, it just tells me like, yo, bro, you're going to be there one day. It's the reason why God letting you see this stuff because mm-hmm. this is going to be you, so you got to know how to move. Mm-hmm. Least, that's how yeah. I mean, put it in my process, it in my head. I would imagine. Like I said, we, we, we're a judge of process from the outside. You actually been in the room. You know, like, you know, what it really take. It could, it, that's, that's tough. Yo, 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 it's your host, Spin Inks, Nothing's Normal Podcast. And I'm here introducing Righteous Felon Craft Jerky, ladies and gentlemen. It's an all-natural uh, jerky, beef jerky, excellent source of protein, good for you gym heads like myself, good post-workout meal or snack, I should say. Um, they got some cool names, too. Shout out to the uh, Righteous Felon. You know, I know a lot of felons. I'm a felon myself. So uh, this really hit different. My favorite would be uh, the Teriyaki Balboa. If you know me, those are obvious reasons. Uh, my balls got uh, the boxing gloves. Uh, we got the Maryland Monroe. Now, for those who've been to Maryland, you know what they're known for, good old crab seasoning. So we got the Maryland Monroe. And finally, I'm going to give y'all one more, the Soul Survivor. <laughs> the Soul Survivor, Korean barbecue inspired. Tastes like rib tips. You won't know the difference. Uh, if you want to give these snacks a try, you head over to their website at righteousfelon.com. Type in promo code POLY15 for a discount on this excellent, healthy, delicious snack. I'm, I always wanted to ask, it's two hard questions. I never really interviewed a barber and I never got a chance to ask barbers this. The first question I want to ask, why the fuck are barbers always late? It don't matter what time, what time the haircut is, what day it could be. Okay, Thursday, I'm coming at this time. The same time that Monday, oh, it's a storm going on in front of my car. Like, what is up with Barber's Times? I find uh, that. Um, yeah. Yeah, oh, man. I shout out to my barbers. Yeah, um, shout out to the barbers. <laughs> it's like, just Barber's Time and it's uh, crazy. I, I, I clip noticed. Salute. I, I took some time to think on it. Clip the community. <laughs> yeah. Um, barbers is always late. Y'all are important, so it's worth the wait. But y'all are always I mean, late. We don't get paid by the. I, I could I can answer it a few ways. So I'm gonna throw a few different reasons to try to speak for different barbers, different situations for different barbers. Um, hopefully I, I'm speaking for, for 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 y'all in one of these situations. I'm trying my I'm gonna try my I best. I love the barbers, but um, we don't get paid by the hour. Mm-hmm. Um, so you 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 kind of wanna you don't want money to wait, but you kind of want to make sure to guarantee. So you try to do what you could do before you get in there. And then you get a matter of fact, let's skip that. We compare ourselves to a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> you go to a doctor's office. You ain't yeah. never. If you see, if you go to a doctor's office and the doctor's office is empty, you might want to leave. Yeah. Because that means he don't got no patience, and right. then if he ain't got no patience, readers the help reviews. Yeah. The same thing with a barber. If a barber don't got somebody in a chair and you waiting, I ain't gonna certain know. clients, certain clients don't get that treatment though. Like <coughs> supreme clientele. Yeah. Certain clients don't supreme get that. Supreme clients. But in general, pop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in general. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Gin pop, yeah. coach. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Humbly, but you know what I mean. Like, listen, uh, you, you got the coach clients. It, it, it's, it's, it, you know what I mean. We give you a fifteen minute window because the, the client's not always on time. So when yeah. the clients get late because the because co- of traffic or because of the job or because yeah, of the kids, yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't be like, yo, you lost your spot. <laughs> you, you, we, we we still make it happen. We just so it's it's you, we give a little window. I think that's a major major reason, really, what it is. Um. It's really because we just like to have our, our our schedules packed. Yeah. So, but now if, if you the first cut and somebody say they're gonna be there at ten a.m. and they get there at ten forty five or ten thirty, 
I can't really speak for that. That's yeah. just bad business. That's unprofessional, to be honest. <coughs> okay. um, but if you happen to come in and it's a little busy, things do happen. Other people come a little bit late. Mm -hmm. If you're the 10th customer, you're the sixth client for the day and yeah. everybody was five minutes late, that's 30 minutes behind. He's technically is because of everybody else being just a little five minutes. Yeah. So you kind of got to put that in a little bit of consideration. But it, 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 it's, it's, it's like a good, it's a good way. It's a good thing to wait though yeah, sometimes. It, it do be worth the wait, especially with my unique, you know, Vegeta line having ass. I, I need, you gotta, I need whew, special attention. And then my, my, my second question, I always wanted to ask a barber. Cause listen, before I say what I'm about to say, LeBron James missed the layup. LeBron James missed the free throw. Michael Jordan missed the free throw. It happens. What do you usually do? Like, have you ever cut somebody's head and been like, God damn, like, I just zeked the fuck out of this guy? Like, what am I, like, how, how does that process go? Do you just try to, like, act like it didn't happen? Do you spray a little extra alcohol on it? <laughs> do you tell them, like, yo, listen, you probably should wear the do rag for the next couple weeks. Um, I, I, I'll make it, i hit you on the back end. Like, how, how does every barber handle Zeke and a client? That's important. <laughs> People um, ask Bob. Listen, you, you, you definitely frightened. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> and do you know? Are you even aware when you're doing Some, it? Hopefully you're, you're not aware. Um, because <laughs> <laughs> shit happens, though. Shit I'm happens. not judging. If you're you aware, like, if that's, back. yeah, if hopefully you're not aware. Like, you just, you think you did your best and yeah. maybe you missed the direction or two. He said, yo, take a little bit off and you took a little too much off. Yeah. So, um, I mean, but... My policy is real simple. I, I tell people, I give them the mirror. I ask them how they want it. Mm -hmm. I listen. I turn them to the mirror. Let them describe. Watch yeah. their hand movement. Watch. Sometimes they say they want a, a fade, but they <laughs> they describe a whole tape up. You yeah. know what I mean? They uh, don't even know the style. vice versa. You know what give I mean? Give me a so, mullet. Exactly. So it's like, <laughs> I watch that. Sometimes they show you pictures of somebody with a slick back, and they got... Yeah, it's like this not gonna fit for you, bro. This ain't even your texture. It ain't me. It's the head shit. I, me, I don't do yeah. surgery, baby. Yeah. I, don't do <laughs> I don't do surgery. Yo, <laughs> you kind of do though. I see some of your clients. You bring yeah, them I back. Do a few, I mean, I, I do miracle work, yeah, but I, you yeah. know what I mean. Like I ain't. Yeah. You know, I do cosmetic now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. No offense shout to nobody, to but this is what we deal with as a bar. Yeah, shout out, to, <laughs> shout out to the guys who had baldies last year, and now y'all got a full-blown line. Yeah, shout like, out to y'all. Listen, that's, that's, listen, I can help you with that, too. Now, yeah, you want to go that route, too? Yeah, listen. I, so like, how did... Uh, is listen, that that's, like, that's the new, that's the next level of barber, and that's where we're going. We're taking it, like, barber, the game is always... Um, Evolving. Y'all sweeping the head and saving it. And I, I don't know about all that. But listen, man, they, they going in the drawer. They pulling yeah. out some head and you walking yeah. out with yeah. You come in there with the baldy. Like I'm going to need you, you soon, you, baby. You I'm walk out soon. there. Let's, <laughs> yeah, don't zoom in on this thing. We, we 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 could do the miracles in there, you know what I mean? But you know, and I, and I, and I encourage you, like, if because like at the end of the day, I think a haircut give you confidence. Oh my god. Um, <sighs> a haircut could say a lot of words, like, mm -hmm. you know, if you if. Unlike a woman, if you if a woman don't like her hair, she could put on a wig, yeah. she could put on a doobie wrap, she could put on a uh, uh, what's they walk around to look like shower curtains, but they, they like they shower curtains. They, they but you know what I mean? Because we ain't really wearing, yeah. I ain't nah. we ain't really worrying about the hair, yeah. dudes. If you you the most you could do is put a fitted on a hat, and you go inside, you gotta take that off. So you sick? You, seven oh, yeah. days, baby, you gotta hey, deal with that. Listen, if if if, if it's um no hats allowed, they go home. You you stay in the house. Count Put yourself out. on punishment. Yo, holla at me, gang. That's <laughs> when you guys do chores now. You see? <laughs> start catching up on the shows. Do overtime at yo. work. You like yo, listen, I'm in. Based on the gram lit. You or, at home like damn man. Because a bad barber, a bad haircut. So. But it happens though. It, it, it happens. It's, it's respectfully. So, like I was saying, my policy is really like, when I show you that mirror at the end, if you really don't like it, and I can see in your face, like, yo, you genuinely don't like the cut, yo, it's on me. Yeah. And you come back, I'll probably take care of you again. Why? Because I can make a mistake, and um, it's a haircut. It's, I, I, it's my brand. That's what you do. Yeah. So I want my name behind it. So it, things happen. It, it, it happens. Yeah. You've been actively cutting hair. How long? 20? You got 20, you 20 in? Um, 20 plus, bro. I'm yeah. actually about to be like 38. So the Barber Hall of Fame. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if there yeah. was one, I, I definitely want to get nominated. At least yeah, give me, give me youngest, a view. Yeah. Um, but I started, yeah, 14. Let me see. Pretty much when the ball dropped, I started them cutting hair um, 2000 in, um, in the shop. Sheesh. And um, apprenticing under the twins. And mm -hmm. fast forward, 20, about 22 years up. So... Yeah. More, than, more than half my life I've been cutting hair. <coughs> um, 
I see you got some books there. Uh, yeah. What you got going on? Before, yeah. So um, I actually during the pandemic I was picking up some new skills and you know trying to figure out they cut down the lock down the shops. So what I did was you know I learned how to um. I'm in the computer graphic designs, but mm -hmm. I learned how to like really illustrate. Like, let me learn how to illustrate some pictures. So, so I'm gonna show you all three. Yeah. So what I did was I actually set myself to a challenge, and I was like, I want to be an author. You know what I mean? Think of another way to make some income as a barber, some passive income. Mm -hmm. Some. So I um started my own publishing company, Barber Bookhouse Publishing, mm -hmm. and I learned how to illustrate. And I came up with a um pretty much a three book series. Yeah. And um, it's called My Haircut Day. Right, and you can find it available on Amazon. Just Google "My Haircut Day," um, written and illustrated by Brandon Graves. That's tough. And it, I use all my years' experience and pretty much try to think of the common issues, like with a little kid having a first haircut. That could be a whole journey. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to talk about brought in threes. Him waking up, and, which is the first book, is "My Big Hair Morning." He's waking up and um, going through the journey of uh, acknowledging his parents, saying like, "You need to go to the barber shop," and them agreeing. Mm -hmm. Him realizing, first he'd been a little difficult, and him realizing, like, you know what, I need to go. And the second one is my barbershop journey where we pretty much, it's the, which is good for bonding between a father and a son, our father-like yes. figure and a son. So that's the thing, the, the, that journey of going to the barbershop from getting ice cream to going to the, on a, they, t they took a train in that book, but it could be the car ride, it could <coughs> be anything you decide to do, but just that bonding, which is a good, and then the third book is actually my first haircut, him being in a barbershop and meeting a barber, seeing the other people, mm -hmm. wow. observing the atmosphere yeah. inside, right. watching somebody else get their haircut before them. You know what I mean? So a whole experience at a barbershop. I tried it the whole day. Wow. I tried to break it out into three books. So if anybody got a kid that's looking to have their first haircut, I definitely recommend you um, pick this up. It's a good read. Any barbershop, if you cut a lot of kids and you got the crying kid, this is a good read for the parents to read while mm -hmm. they waiting. It's quick picture books. Um, bright colors, easy words, so the kids remember it. Um, yeah, and if you pick it up, definitely leave a review. Let me know what dope. you think about it. Where can they find this? This is dope. Um, we available on Amazon. Mm. Um, and you can if you go on Amazon, you can search up My Haircut Day series by Brandon Graves. Um, mm. in each book, my first haircut, my barbershop, my fun barbershop journey, um, and my big hair morning and. You can pick it up, check out Barbara Bookhouse, if you, which we're going to look to expand. That's something that we're working on, too, this year coming up. I got somebody that's going to um, partner with me. And we're going to help other barbers and hairstylists right. publish their own books. As they should. Yeah, wow. like, you know what I mean? Because, like I said, I want to try to help people in the industry, like, t take it from behind the chair and show, like, you can make a career out. It's not a hustle. Yeah. You can still be doing hair and selling books or selling products. So I'm going to show people how to do that by example. So that's what I'm working on now. Okay, so it's safe to say, like you said, you're not just a barber, but your barbershop career has pivoted you into other avenues, but it all started in the barbershop. Yes, yes. Yeah, it it all fire. starts with barbershop, that's and I'm fire. trying to use barbering to mm -hmm. connect everything, and that's part of the journey and the challenges. I tell people, I cut hair, and I'm, I might not charge a million dollars for a haircut, but I'm going to make a million dollars off of cutting hair. Right. Wow. And so That's deep. That's deep. And why not? That's a genius plan because, like I said, the barbershop is the place nowadays. When we was younger, we get away with, you know, one haircut a month. You know, these times with, with, with social media, these kids, there's no way in the world these kids in the barbershop at least once a week. So while they're there, make it an experience where you introduce them to, you know, like you said, this, this is marketing. This is business. This is, this is everything on top of getting a haircut. So that, that's dope. And speaking of COVID, you started this process? I started it during COVID. It took me about a year, like between yeah. teaching Mondo, I taught myself how to draw on um, the whole Adobe Suite. I was familiar with it some, but I really taught myself how to draw faces yeah. and shade and make try to make like like a cartoon character look realistic. And mm -hmm. I had to teach myself how to publish a book, how to right. get it proofread, and the whole process from beginning to end, which I could share. And that's why I'm gonna start sharing people three how books. to really get a book done. And like you, you see, I didn't do just one; I did it with three and. Colors Another, and everything, detail, a lot de of detail. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. And it, like I said, it was trial and error. Front and back, man. This would bring me back to, you know, Juniper Hill days. Going yeah. to, that's when the library was fun. Back in them days, you get a book, you bring it home, never bring it back. It's like one of the books yeah, I and, at home. You appreciate it. And, and honestly, yeah. how many times we go in and it's a book that we really want to read about. And even down to like the, the, the covers, I try to put the yeah. picture of the character. Visual. You see us on it. Yes. That I'm actually, you know what I mean? Who gave you this idea? This ain't you, is it? Um, Nah, that ain't me. I, oh. But... 
<laughs> I mean, it, it was more of I tried to think of. I was like, I want to get a character that looks related. So you know, what a I mean, little just, Bill vibe, a little bit. Yeah, you know, yeah. like an Afrocentric character. Like mm -hmm. he, he, he could be Afro Latino. He could be Afro American. He could be Afro European. He, he could be just brown skin. Like so, for the minority, he could be any minority. Like mm -hmm. so, it's good to see something. Sometimes something that's us is a little more relatable. Yeah. Um. So that so that's really why I um went went, went that route because I had a customer that actually who gave me the idea. She asked me for a book to recommend for her son. Mm. And I, we literally went on Amazon together looking for books. And I was like, I really don't know, but you know what? I'll help you find one. I could probably tell if we look at it together. I just know you. It's just and started. we couldn't find none. And I was like, cha-cha, that's me, cha ching there it go. Like, Let me fill his void. Yeah. It's a problem I could solve right there. So I was like, you know what? Yeah. I'm going home and learn how to get that book. And that was one of the first people I actually reached out to him. Like, hey, yeah. I want you to get, give me an opinion on this book. And they were shocked because I didn't tell them I was doing it. I just did it. And it's like, like you said, I don't say much. Yeah, I just did yeah, it. And it was like, yo, here. Up. Remember we had that uh -huh. combo? Look, you motivated this right here. Mm -hmm. Me, 11 months later, but look, this is what I did. And I, that's some of the, one of the, the upsides to being a barber. You never know who's sitting in your chair. Uh, speaking of COVID, I got to shout you out. Um, you, I got to zap you up. During mm, COVID, man, we all know so I went love. through a, a terrible, you know, tragic situation. And I still got my hair cut. And my son, you was doing house visits, man. Shout out to Kamal, too. That was pulling up to the crib faithfully. I'm in a robe. I'm, I'm fr You see me in, some, in certain states, like 90% of the world didn't see me. In, and I was comfortable with you because, like I said, like, it's that, it's that, for one, I know you're outside of the career. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, like you said, you, you was cutting our hair, man. And on top of that, you gave my son his very first haircut. When he turned one years old, he had a party across the Billy B's. I think we had his first. No, we actually had his first party at the center. I'm lying. See, when you were active dad, you lose you lose track of all of the party. He didn't have a party a every year. That's but, a um, fact. Yeah, you you you. So I gotta shout you out. It's a lot of history, right here. Uh, before we wrap it up on a barber tip. Speaking of you know young men, uh, I want to use the words red flag, but I feel like when a woman brings a, a boy into the barbershop. Now, of course, there might be times when that has to happen. But usually the bunny ears go up, I feel like. When a woman walks in with her son, when a woman's bringing her son to the barbershop every week, it, it'll start making you kind of think, like, like, like mm. what's going on there. Uh, is this, do you get that same feeling, too, when a woman walks in the barbershop with her kid? I, um, I, got, a, I got a lot of female clients. I've it had a lot of female clients, single moms, and some of them not single moms. Mm -hmm. The single moms is kind of different. It's like, all right, cool. If anything, when they come to the shop, you'd be like, yo, mom, you can take a break. Like, yeah. shit, they good. Like, especially me as a little boy in the yeah. shop, and he, let him hang around the bros and right. observe some, 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 some man, some mean, some man energy, and just, just, just observing. That's dope. Um, but then you got, you know, the, the, you know, the ones that's not, and it's like, all right, but. You yeah. know, it, it, but I, I think the women are very inviting and welcoming in the barbershop. Like we, we try to, it, it changes things in the atmosphere a little bit because we change the conversation. Definitely, respect. you know what I mean. Like mm -hmm. everybody try to be respectful <coughs> in a real in a real barbershop. You're gonna be respectful Absolutely. for the woman. Yes, you don't mix business with pleasure. So you know, barber gonna a, a barber shouldn't be crossing no lines and yeah. trying to. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. but sh things happen. Don't get it twisted yeah. now. If, if, if she like you and she, let me, I mean, we, I, I don't know if you just saw the last episode of Force, man. You see my boy Diamond, man. You I mean, know, she, you know, she brought him to that barbershop. Yeah. He, he, you he know, but, you, but don't get caught up in that now. Don't, like I said, don't mix business with pleasure now. That's, yeah. that, that, that's, 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 that's money every week you about to lose. Yeah, that's important. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, listen. That's important. We don't don't mix business with pleasure, man. Like you heard it, it from Rennie. <laughs> don't you heard it do from Rennie. I, feel, I don't feel it's don't do crazy it. calling you Rennie. You heard it from my boy, man. You know Listen, you can cut ends trying to <laughs> like, so it's not worth it. So, um, you you, you got to get you. It's it's almost like a barbers. You 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 tend to be popular in your mm -hmm. community when you're a good barber. Definitely. So that alone attracts a lot of people. So you're gonna run into like the female customers. You always got the yo. Come do the house call, or yo. You know what I mean? Let me be the last client, and then you got you know the moms that come to get the hair cut. Yeah, like, Jody. You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You got you got all of that. That's yeah. just come with the industry. Like yeah. if you do anything good, well, I don't care if you a cook. They gonna be like yo, my kid is hungry. Like they gonna come late. Like don't get caught up in that. Like you know what I mean? Just 
yeah. help out if you can, but take keep it professional, take right. care of business. Like, so that's something that helped me get far because I don't get caught. I don't, I don't, I don't really just get caught up in that too much. I got a couple more questions. I want your take on a couple more things before we wrap it up. Uh, industry, when you hear that word, a lot come with it. Uh, I'm learning whether I have minor or major. But the industry is, industry is industry. It comes with a certain level of engagement. Uh, you somebody who I've seen travel by yourself. Uh, what, is some, what is something in the, in, what is a, uh, a strategy you use as far as mental health, as far as the industry? Because I, f- I feel like it can get tiring. Like you as yeah. a nice barber, somebody always need their hair it, cut. Very overwhelming. Yeah. Um, Listen, what is that's something that part of why do? I travel a lot. Mm-hmm. Like part of me traveling is to get away and just free myself and um, clear my mind. I don't, I, I, sometimes I'll travel, I, I don't even, I, I leave my phone in the hotel room and I go out for the day. Like mm. I don't just so I don't get bothered. Like I'm out of town. I'm not in the barbershop. I'm not around to cut your hair. Yeah. What could I do? So I, sometimes when I don't answer my phone, I'm out of town. That's really why I'm doing it. Yeah. It's for my own mental safe. Um, mm-hmm. because we're like therapists, bro. Um, a barber's like a therapist. You, right. some you Ooh, you, bro. Know. The stuff that you hear, <laughs> you like dogs. I need to go talk to somebody now. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, like. Yeah. But you know that's part of that trust factor that you get with your clients. So sometimes yeah. they, they just gotta vent, get it off their chest. It's like, damn, bro, like why you had to tell me? Like <laughs> you yeah, know what like, I mean? Like Barbara Bonds. Yeah, so, like it's, it's, but it's, it's, it come along deep. with the game, though, in the yeah, industry. So it does to, to, to really observe all of that and be a confidant of so many people. You you just gotta get time to yourself and just mm-hmm. Musa. Like I was just in the when I was out in Vegas, I went out to the to the mountains and um. Wow. In, in 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 the desert and I that ass was just like went to a cliff and was just chill for a little while. I was just like, yo, this is crazy, just me and Earth. Like none of it but just I like that. Just relaxing, like something yeah. different. I mean, drive through the desert with the sundown, just look look like a pain. I just do that stuff type of stuff because I'm like, yo, that's so opposite of what I see every day. That's on my list now. Wow. Bro, if you could experience it, experience it, bro. Like it's And that's what yeah. nothing's normal is about. Like I like I said, our typical soothers music, you know. I don't really consider marijuana a drug no more. But uh, mm. yeah, man, you just go in the desert, you just at the top of a cliff, huh? Just chill. Yo, that was like a natural high, yo. You were like, a cactus. Yo, for, it's funny, I didn't get to see a cactus. I was looking for one, but I seen like a tortoise and I seen like them little trees, like little plants. Mm-hmm. But I definitely was trying to find a cactus, but it was just, bro, to see like real mountain cliffs, like, yo, if you go down there, it's just you and Earth, you're done. Yeah. Like, you just, birds, like, hawk, I mean, uh, I mean, I think that was a hawk. I seen big birds. It was just, you like I said, connecting with nature. Yeah, yo, right. you, like How no. You can't describe. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you, bro. I'm like, trying to like, yeah, it's a whole experience. It. Like yeah. you next, if you ever go to Vegas, go to the Strip, experience the Strip. But then after you leave Dreas, I want, which is like one of the best clubs I've ever been to. Right. Um, shout out Dreas in Vegas. Shout out to Dreas. After after you leave Dreas, you next day wake up and go to the to the, to the casino. I mean, a casino. Go to the to the desert and. Mm-hmm. Take a ride and just clear your mind, though, and then before you go home, like yeah. traveling. Okay, yeah, that that's that's like I should by yourself. Um, the next question I want to ask you: um, Are you a father? You got kids? Yeah, I'm a proud father. Um, yeah, I got two daughters and a son. <coughs> um, yeah. yeah, so balancing out working, you know, yeah. raising the kids. That's most of my time. Um, mm-hmm. And when I'm not doing that, like I said, I'm I'm out. I'm on the road. Now, we spoke about your father in the beginning. Is your father still with us? Oh, nah, he passed away okay. like a few years back. So what is two different things that he taught you? One verbal, one nonverbal, something you just, you learned, something he taught you like Brandon, X, Y, and Z about life, period. And then something else that you just watched this demonstration and it just stuck with you for the rest of your um, life. Verbal first, like something he told you that you still incorporate to this day? I mean, real men don't hit women. Mm-hmm. You're a coward. Yeah. So I never hit a woman. Yeah. Um, and I won't. Yeah. Um, so little stuff like that. That's And then I have other siblings through him. Right. Like, I guess we, some people call it half, but I don't believe in that half. Yeah. Thing. Oh, man, we blood, we brothers. We yeah. So I have siblings through him. Um, so he always said, like, yo, if you have siblings, if you happen to have, I mean, have to make sure all your, they, they know each other, your kids, Make sure all of them yeah. know each other. They know we, you don't want them to grow up and not 
and know have a relationship so you make that happen by any means necessary so that's something i try to imply with my kids like i want all of them to just know each other and try to you know what i mean be in each other's life and just have some type of relationship that's important man that's, I, that's, that's essential the certain stuff is it, it sounds small but it's really it's very it's colossal it's, it's something like i feel like parts of our culture get the blame for things that go wrong in the house you know like not too many songs pushing or advocating for absent parents. There's not too many songs. Yo, nah. I ain't going. Fuck my kids. Da, 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 da. We don't. There's no way to hear that. We can only see that. And it's you know, hard, I just feel like it's not there. It's hard yeah. to find that on TV now. Yeah, like we nah. don't have those mm -mm. Uncle Phil's no more. And yeah, uh, Carl. You know what yeah. I mean? Carl Winslow's. We don't have those people no more. But um. <coughs> but yeah, it's still that's but that's kind of what the barbershop bring. Mm -hmm. You can find that in the barbershop. Like yeah. shit, it could be your barber. Mm -hmm. so, it, 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 I'm pretty. Sure, I mean, it's, it could be somebody that come to the barbershop and y'all happen to come on Friday at uh, our Thursday at eleven o'clock and he got the ten thirty appointment. Yeah. You like some people now you getting that haircut for that relationship and that bond. So some people do that a lot. So. It, right. And I, like as men, you make the best. Being there, you, that it doesn't mean you always have. You can't, as especially as an entrepreneur. I mean, it makes parenting absolutely harder because you have other arrangements, you have other obligations this, this, in order to to provide. So I just feel like with that, we often drop the ball, or we get because I say we, because I'm going into entrepreneurship, which. You know, as we grow, it takes life takes you here to there. I might not be able to make every everything, but you figure out a way to make it work. You still, you know, you stay there. So that was dope. You you know, you all your kids knowing each other and having some sort of relationship. That's, that's fire. The, that's 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 the key, man. Yeah, like it's well. Yeah, you don't like I said that was something that installed like he installed in me and mm -hmm. um It's only right. Like, yeah, he he even down right. to like that's why I don't believe in the half thing because he never really let me look at like the half sibling thing. Like, yo, your brother's your brother's. Yeah, that's that. Mine, like, mine. Yeah, yeah. So that's what a real man's supposed to do. Yeah. Um. It, and I, I don't know. Being a barber, that kind of help you with that because, like I said, you're around so many different men. So, mm -hmm. I got shout out. I got clients that I watch them how they raise. They have to run their houses and raise their families, and I'm like, damn, that's dope. That's whack. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? So <laughs> everything ain't dope. Some of that, that's whack. Yeah, for sure. Can't be like that. But you know what? Yeah. I'm finished this haircut. Get mm -hmm. out of my chair. Get Make him out of work. my chair. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I ain't trying to judge, but yeah. don't do that. Like, I'm, yeah. matter of fact, he got the chair. I'm te you know, hold on real quick. I'm texting my daughter real quick. Y'all yeah. you real quick. Like, mm -hmm. like, that's all it takes is, is like, that, is acknowledging. Yeah, you like, know? so yeah. you, 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 yeah. that's the key, though. You got to, like, the kids, you got to take care of the kids. And I feel like you don't get no blessings if you don't take care of your kids. Bro. Yeah. So shout out all my dads out shout there. Shout out all the dads More. out there. Shout out the business, dads. The business the dads. Business. Um, before we wrap it up, man, uh, final thoughts? Anything you want to shout out, promote? Um, I see you got the, the merch on. I see you got yeah, the Oak style. I, on. Yo, listen, I got we the- got um, going. That's, that's something like the Oak brand, original Oak B. That's my clothing line. I've been- I haven't really been pushing it like that because, um, to you be honest- I know. It, 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 you know, but it really started because- I was just like, yo, I'm, I'm with my own brand. I am a brand. Like, my mom's knew she named me Brandon. Like, you're a different get it, brand on. Like, so, yeah. like, it, like, you're a different type of So, name. but I've been, I be all over the place with it. So, people, I'm getting asked a lot about it. So, I'm, I'm going to actually start coming 2024, producing it, getting it produced more like in a mass where mm -hmm. I can actually start selling it, have it, and put it in different locations and have so people could pick up <laughs> some of it. Um, even down to like, if you look in the book, like, I don't know if you name you Pete. But he's actually wearing I mean, yeah, brand. the brand. So like this book within itself is like me um promoting like the dad everybody's Absolutely. wearing oh, shit. the actual brand. So this is merchandise that I'm actually putting in the store. So people buy the books they might be looking for. Yeah. So I'm promoting the brand. You know what I mean? Just you are a brand in itself. Yeah. So Always marketing happen. myself and yeah. everything cross. You know, trying to cross marketing. Mm -hmm. the, it's a conglomerate. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like build my own conglomerate and try to pass that legacy on to my kids and absolutely. That, that's what I'm gonna show other barbers how to do, and you know what I mean. But I'm gonna lead by example. Absolutely. So. I never even heard of. Listen, I ain't been too many places, but I never even heard of uh, the way you just broke that down as a barber. Like I, those those plans, that goal, that mission, that journey that you're gonna go on to take being a barber to a whole. You're not just a barber. You're nah. a barber. You're a teacher. You're a therapist. Uh, shit. You're a friend. You're a bro. You're, it's 
You're a little bit of everything. I, I, yeah, that's it's like I mean, a pastor, bro. That's that's but that's where the name Rennie, like time I got the name Rennie, it, like it was for Renaissance Man. I mm. got I had um when I was doing my internship, my teacher, my, my mentor, um, shout out Lori, Miss Kimball. Um yeah. She she was like, yo, yeah, be your renaissance man. I'm like, she's like, yeah, I'm gonna call you renaissance man. So I didn't even know what that word was. So I went and Googled it. And I was like, well, this is actually dope. I like this. So I, I um I, I ran with it, but then when I see, I was in Atlanta, I was really gonna like try to incorporate the name and I actually did some research and I realized that Nick Cannon uses like his companies is he goes by Renaissance Man. Oh. Yeah, so and I got mad respect for Nick. That's another one of the idols. I'm gonna meet him man. one day. He does a lot. So yeah. if I could have his career, half of his career, I'll be, yeah. be, be happy with myself. Mm -hmm. Like, um, so you know, I respect him. I was just was like, I'm gonna cut it short to Rennie. So I was gonna buy, you know, Rennie, Rennie man, Rennie Cash when I was on the rap and stuff. And then yeah. you know, I just, I just yeah, I remember Rennie, that. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, sure, yeah. so <laughs> it, it, it's it's Rennie, that's me though. That's yeah. that's what I do. Um so the Barbara Rennie. Barbara but Rennie. Renaissance. I could do a little bit of everything. Oh, uh, once again, man, let them know where they can come to get a haircut, man. Fresh yeah, haircut. Yo, you don't got to give them the prices and all you, that. You, you can find me. Listen, I, I could work on um, mo most budgets, not all budgets, but most budgets I could work on. I try to make it happen. Um, I, I do give backs. I, I get free haircuts out. I have um real quick, in fact, plug in my nonprofit. Um, For sure, yeah, yeah. Definitely. We did a coat drive this past winter, Damn. and um, we still have leftover coats. I actually ran, I, I couldn't, I had a problem giving out. I, I was, received so many donations. And it was from customers. So shout out to my customers and friends in the barber community that donated coats. I just put up a couple of posts and they was like, hit me in the DM. Like, yo, bro, I got bags of coats. So I ended up with about 60 jackets. And I, mm. I still got about 20 jackets left, like good condition used coats to just give out. So anybody need a coat, hit me up. We'll tag um, the Instagram, put them yeah, in. Yeah, like just just hit, hit me on my Instagram. And um, the, foundation, the foundation is called Hair We Care Foundation. H A I R like hair, hair we, we care. care. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and and if you want to be a part of it, I'm looking for other barbers, beauticians. Um, you don't have to be a barber, but just people that do hair professionals, and we, we mentors, and we're gonna do like a mentorship and give back to the communities. So we're gonna do the, the giveaway again this winter. So you can find me on Oak <coughs> Styles, um, on Mernick Avenue, um, the Barber Rent at the Barber Rennie, um, at my personal is at I M like. The letter I am just J U S T Rennie R E N I. Um, so you can follow me there. Hit me up if you got any questions. <laughs> and um, yeah, like I, I just want to just, you know, just make my impact. And like I said, try to be the greatest barber to do it. Not the best barber as far as skills, but the greatest to ever do it as far as impact the industry. Yeah, that's tough. Um, lastly, barber schools, man. Um, give them some some notable uh, barber schools where they can leave out with their barber PhDs. Um, Listen, you you can you you shout out to all the barber schools out there. Um, Westchester, shout out to all the barber schools out there. Westchester Barber Academy, Mount Vernon, New York. Um, mm -hmm. If you're looking to get licensed and um, you know what I mean, start from the beginning, do some training, like really get your license. That's a good spot to check out. Um, it's, it's, I mean, black owned, which it's not that big of a deal. No matter who's really teaching you, it's a barber school, it's a barber school, but. It's you know, just motivates you to want to go there. Um, I'm actually going to get into um I'm launching like an online academy where right. yeah. I'm I'm not going to be accredited yet, but we're going to be like a prep academy where if somebody's just, just want to learn the skill mm -hmm. to if somebody's in the industry and they want to uh, if somebody's in the industry and they want to learn how yeah. to potentially get celebrity clients. Out. You know what I mean? It's a premium yeah. clientele. It just balance out life. Needs some type of coaching, career coaching. Now we're going to offer that one on one trainings if somebody want to learn how to do. I was telling you a little bit about like the you know the 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 the, uh, man, the units, yeah. the hair placement systems. I could teach people how to do that. So I'm going to actually be getting into teaching a lot more myself. So look out for the um, Renaissance Barber Academy. That's that's going to be coming real real soon. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's that's that should be something nice. So be, let's say between Westchester Barber Academy, Renaissance Barber Academy, Atlas down in Manhattan. Um, you there's a few barber. So just check your local. Instagram and you could probably yeah, find a barber school and if you need me to co-sign and if you want me to check it out to be like yo they're official I have no problem doing it yeah. like I don't hate on no barbers I, as you see I try to push barbers to just get in the industry mm -hmm. in the culture yo nothing's normal podcast Rennie the barbers on deck we got legally highest seltzer water the lime G Lo played itself for my mango listen the lime is cool it tastes a little bit like Sprite but I'm I told you I'm tropical I'm 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 Afro I'm Afro American. I like a little bit of flavor. 
mango. Actually, we got to get the raspberry aside. We got to get those in. Legally high, send those in, give you a nice little review, see how y'all come in on the raspberry tip. Yo, signing out. Yo, and once again, I want to thank you. Thanks, yo, for inviting me to the show. Oh, Good luck. I bro. like what's going on. I've been tuned in. Big bro. Listen, nothing's normal. Yeah. <laughs> That's our motto. Nothing's for normal. Real, man. What's normal, it's, bro? Define it. Show me listen, normal. I don't know what normal is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do nothing normal. <laughs> Show me perfect. I deal with imperfect. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Yeah. Love. Respect.